Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone, myself Dr. D. Menaka, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering in Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today I am going to present on the topic IoT Communication Protocols. So before we are going into the topic, I, I would like to give a short introduction about what is IoT. IoT is used for accessing and controlling our daily day to day life applications through internet which is nothing but it is called as internet of things. So to access and to control the devices uh, with each other we need to follow a set of protocols uh, to uh, for a successful transmission. Those are called as IoT communication protocols. These communication protocols are the backbone of the IoT systems and this enables the network connectivity and coupling of devices. This allows the communication or the data exchange between the devices through the network. So to move into the IoT protocols, in 7 OSI layers, we have the IoT communication protocols in application layer, transport layer, network and link layer. In this particular lecture, we are going to see about the IoT messaging protocols which is present in the application layer. In application layer, we are going to see about HTTP, COAP, MQTP, XMPP, DDS, WebSockets and AMQP protocols. First is HTTP protocols which is hypertext transfer protocol. Using this protocol, if we want to send the information from client to server, first a TCP connection is established. It needs to be established between the client and the server. Once the link is established from client to server, the server has to receive that connection and it has to establish the connection between server to client. Once the both links are established, the client will send the request to the web server like uh, in the form of hypertext what messages or I, I need to send a message. Once that information or the request is received from the client, the web server will send the acknowledgement or the response request to the client through our hypertext and wait for the response. Once this data transmission is over, the client will close the TCP connection and this is the protocol or the working of HTTP. Next is COAP protocol which is constrained application protocol. This constrained application protocol works in the form of conformable and non-conformable messages. Conformable messages in the sense once the message is requested it will wait for the response or the acknowledgement from the server. Non-conformable messages means the information or the message which is sent will not receive any acknowledgement or the response. Here we are going to see an example of COAP in the form of successful and the unsuccessful transmission. First is for the successful transmission through conformable message. Here the client is sending the request in the form of token or any ID to the server like it needs to get the temperature from the server. Once this request is received from the server, the server will send the acknowledgement with the same token ID with the response also. This is the successful transmission of COAP. Unsuccessful condition, the C conformable message if it sends the request from the client to the server, if the server does not receive any uh, request from the client due to signal or the transmission problem, it will wait for a certain period of time that is time period T. Then the client again will send an acknowledgement that no response is received from the server and it will get an answer like it is not from it means then it is an error message. This is the successful and unsuccessful uh, COAP protocol transmission. Next is MQTT protocols. This is message queuing telemetry transport protocol. In HTTP which we have seen in the previous slide, HTTP and COAP are request response model which means that if we request uh, an information or a message, we will wait for the response. But this is the published subscriber model. In this model, uh, the MQTT works in the form of if the MQTT client want to send a message to the client, no direct transmission will happen here. In between the client and the server, we will have a message a MQTT broker. This uh, client, if it wants to send a message to the uh, receiver, it will pass through the broker. This broker, what it will do, what are all the messages the client is sending, it will segregate into certain topics and it will check for its originality. Then the, to the particular client using the uh, ID or any code, the messages one is sent to the client one. The message two will be sent to the client two. Once if the client is subscribed to the broker only, this transmission will be happening between broker and the client. This is the working of MQTT protocol. Next is WebSocket. 
in web socket in a http and coap it is a direct uh, or unidirectional communication but in the form of uh, web socket it is a bidirectional bidirectional transmission it means that once the client needs to send or receive the message from the server after establishing the connection the bidirectional messages will be happening it will not wait for the acknowledgement or the response so both can send the messages at a time uh, and once even uh, if the client wants to close the connection also the connection can be closed or the server need to uh, close the connection also it can be closed in both directions the accessing can be taken place this is websocket uh, protocol next is xmpp protocol which is extensible messaging presence protocol here the uh, transmission or the communication takes place between uh, client to client here the client uh, whoever wants to send the message to the other client the all the messages will be collected in the terms of xmpp server this server will be collecting from the client one and will be providing a unique id and here the encryption takes place in uh, inside the server once the uh, client one receives the message the client two client three messages will be kept in the database of the server in the form of id and once all information is collected it was it will be transferred from the one side uh, server to the other side server that means receiver server this server will be sending or uh, uh, sending the message collected from the sender uh, uh, server through the unique id which they have provided here the end to end encryption taking place and this is the direct client to client communication in form of xmpp protocol next is dds protocol this is data distribution service here no brokers are involved here the direct communication taking place with the help of dds web server here the publisher if it needs to send the information to the subscriber then the with the help of the unique id and the messaging code the publish all the uh, messages from the publisher will be saved in the dds database and from this dds database through the id which they have provided the subscriber will be receiving the message without any broker in between this is a direct uh, publish to subscriber model protocol next is amqp protocol which is advanced message queuing protocol in this protocol the publisher will be sending to the uh, receiver or the consumer through the exchange or amqp broker here what it happens means once the publisher needs to send the information to the consumer it will pass through the exchange here uh, in the in exchange block what it happens means or uh, the data messages will be segregated and it will check for the availability of the queue whether to send the message at this time or later so depending upon the availability this exchanged information or the segregated information will be passed to the queue 1 or queue 2 based on the availability and from that queue the message will be sent to the consumer uh, by the time the consumer need to subscribe with the queue where the information uh, can be received or the the message can be sent in the form of re request response model also this is amqp protocols so as of now we have discussed about iot communication protocols in which the messaging or the communication can be taken place in the application layer thank you